Good morning, everybody. It is your friend and brother, Derek Day, and it's your everyday encouragement. I apologize for not getting a video out yesterday, but honestly, I was just too tied up with work, with my secular job. And sometimes you just get overwhelmed by uh, the uh, immensity of some of the tasks that you may have and sometimes that causes you to to get off track and, and that's what happened to me on yesterday so uh, my apologies but today is thankful Thursday and I don't want to pass up wisdom Wednesday so I'm going to do a mashup and I'm gonna try to get all of this in in less time or in the same time as I normally get one but I have a lot to say today, and it's this. We're talking about love. All this week, we're talking about love, 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 love. Love is the principal thing. Without love, we have nothing. Without love, we have no motivation. Without love, we have no acceleration. And without love, we don't have wisdom. Listen, you can have all the knowledge in the world, and, and be able to instruct people and demonstrate things, but if you're doing it with a malicious spirit, without love, then it's worthless. Anything, and I mean anything, anything that is not done in love is worthless. I don't care whether that's spiritual things, whether that's educational things, whether that's business things, governmental things, I don't care what it is. That whatever it is, if it's done without love, it has absolutely zero value. Love is the cornerstone of wisdom. Why? Because this is God's nature. God is love. And if God is love, then that means that if we have the mind of Christ and, and Jesus said, if, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, that means that if we are to have the mind of Christ, the wisdom of Christ, the understanding the will of God, then that means that it must be in love. And, and watch this. If you go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and look at the characteristics of love. Now, I'm, I'm gonna tell you because there are people that say, okay, you know, show me scripture. So here's the scripture. First Corinthians chapter 13, it talks about the characteristics of love. Now, what I challenge you to do is that every place where it says love is, I, I, I humbly submit that you should substitute the word God because God is all of those things. And that being said, I've done a whole teaching on this about tough love because it, it honestly, y'all, it, it's either tough or it's love, but it's not both. If you go and look at the characteristics of love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you will not see tough as a characteristic of love. Now, that being said, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I know that I know that I'm loved by God. I know that I'm approved by God. I know that he smiles on me, that he sheds his favor on me, that he shares his power with me. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that because I understand love, I'm able to share love. And, and I'm able to share love in a way that is not it's not self-deprecating I don't have to humble myself to show love and I don't have to threaten anyone because another thing that love is not threatening now this is what I want to say about that is that there are some people that believe that you have to have some threat in order for people to understand what is good. Let me ask you this, which one of you out there did your mother give you a sandwich of dog poop for you to understand how good meatloaf is? Zero. 
your mother didn't tell you anything, it didn't didn't do anything bad to you to get you to understand something good. Now, yeah, we get we get disciplined, we you know might get a spanking or whatever, but watch this. Those disciplines are for a momentary time. There's nobody out there whose whose parent is punishing them for for something that they did when they were three. So if, if, if that's the case, if parents understand that discipline is for a moment and, and, and that it's, it's for discipline and not punishment, how much more would God do that? So what I want to say here is that people are preaching the threat of hell and calling it love. And I'm here to tell you that that is completely untrue. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go so far as to say that if you took away the whole doctrine or the whole apparatus of hell, most preachers wouldn't have anything to preach about. Yeah, they say, yeah, I preach Christ and I preach him crucified, but if you don't get it, you're going to hell. <laughs> this, is what, this is what's being preached. Listen, you don't have to threaten anybody. The, the Bible says that it is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Not the threat of hell, not the threat of punishment, not discipline or correction, but it's the goodness of God. It, is that when, when we share with people how simply good God is, how loving God is, how graceful God is, and how liberating God is, people hear that. When they hear that, when they hear that, they get excited. And they say, wait a minute, that's not what I've been told. Exactly. You've been told incorrectly. Yeah, that's it. And so I'm, I'm, th I'm thankful that because I know I'm loved, I can speak without fear. I don't have to worry about reprisals. I don't have to worry about anybody excommunicating or, ex or unfellowshipping me or unliking me or unsharing my stuff. I don't care. What I do care about is that you understand that God loves you. And not only does God love you, but he loves you so much that he gave his son so that you could be recon reconciled, redeemed, restored, and imbued with power. That is amazing. That is the gospel. And while I'm here, I'm going to say something too, because like people talk about eschatology and end times, and, and I got to throw this in here as a bonus, but here's the deal. Listen, the vast majority of what's being preached today, I, yes, I said the vast majority, the vast majority is not the gospel. It may be biblical. It may have some scriptural basis. Uh, they're, they're may, they, they may even have some hermeneutic that they're able to use to explain it, but it's not the gospel because the gospel is not hell. The gospel is not behavior modification. The gospel is not rules. The gospel is not politics. The gospel is not any of these things. The gospel is very simply God's unconditional love and unlimited grace that leads to absolute liberty. So are the end times around the corner? Is Jesus coming soon? Nope. Nope. It, and, and that's another thing too. I'm not concerned about the, the afterlife and the hereafter. I, honestly, what God, that, that's the domain of God. That's the realm of God. And I'm going to let God sort that out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you how to live in the here and now. And if you just simply abide by this, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Because see, here's the deal. You can't love yourself without really understanding that you're loved by God. And loving God will allow you to love yourself. And you cannot love others until you love yourself. So you have to love yourself before you love others. And that's that's pretty much what I have today. It's like love is wisdom. 
And, and if you're not operating in love, you're not operating in wisdom. You may have all the knowledge in the world. You may have an IQ of 200 and all of that's great. But if you don't have love, you don't have anything. And I'm grateful that I have love, that, that I am loved by God. And I know that I'm loved so much that I don't have to seek the approval of men. I don't really, you know, what, what people think of me is immaterial, <laughs> you know, uh, because I'm loved. I'm loved. And so since I'm loved and I understand love, I can share love. I can be love to others. And that's what I have for you today. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to hit me up at www.derrickday.com or on facebook.com forward slash Derek Day Ministries, or you can hit me up on Instagram or on Twitter. My handle is Derek E. Day. That's D-E-R-R-I-C-K-E-D-A-Y. Or you can check out my videos on YouTube. It's Derek Day or the podcast on iTunes or Google Play. You can always listen to it in your car, listen to it while you do dishes, while you run or exercise, whatever it is that you do, but get it because this will help you. I, and I'm not saying it because it's me. I'm saying it because, listen, what the world needs now, as Dion Warwick said, is love, sweet love. And like the Doobie Brothers said, without love, where would you be right now? And as the Captain and Tennille said, love will keep us together. That's what I have. So God loves you. And so do I. I hope you have a thoroughly terrific Thursday. Stay blessed.